Hadith 31, The Reality of Zuhd, Asceticism On the authority of Sahil ibn Sa'ad al saidiyyi may Allah be pleased with him, who said, A man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, direct me to an act which, if I do it, will cause Allah to love me and the people to love me. So he, peace be upon him, said, Renounce the world and Allah will love you. And renounce what the people possess and the people will love you. Ibn Majah this is another beautiful hadith among the guidance of the Prophet It shows you the Sahaba that they used to actually ask about that which matters. You know, when somebody comes to the Prophet ask him, Ya Rasulullah, tell me that which I will do to make Allah love me and to make people love me. You know, and the Prophet gave the answer والسلام, accordingly, and that's what the Sahaba used to ask the Prophet for. You know, the Sahaba trusted the guidance of the Prophet that if it is something that they need for their guidance, the Prophet would give it to them. So if the Prophet hasn't mentioned something specific, it means they don't need it. But when it comes to something like that, they would ask عليهم Allah. So they wouldn't ask for just academic enjoyment or academic purpose. They would ask because they really want to know about that which matters. You know, how can I do? What can I do to make Allah love me? What could be a better question than that? And the Prophet والسلام, you know, answered accordingly. So the person who's asking, you know, he wants to know what would make Allah love him and people love him. And the Prophet answered for each. The first one you will have zuhd in the dunya, for the second one you have zuhd in that which people has. So the Prophet didn't lump it all together, but he gave specific answer to each part of that question. Now what is zuhd? Zuhd often is translated as asceticism. Uh, zuhd actually is one of the deeds of the heart. So it's not a deed of the senses. And if you look uh, linguistically, the word zuhd comes from the word zahid. Zahid in Arabic, it means something that is cheap, that is insignificant and little. So having zuhd in something, it means seeing it as insignificant and little. That's, that's really what zuhd means. So as such then having zuhd in the dunya, which means seeing this dunya, this worldly things, this word, seeing it as something little and insignificant. This is what this hadith is talking about, to have zuhd in the dunya. Now the question of course is, uh, how do you develop that zuhd in the dunya? You know, if, uh, if I were to show you a, um, a good shining uh, copper coin, beautiful, nicely carved, and you look at it, you would enjoy it, you would love it. But if while looking at it, I put next to it a gold coin, then suddenly, the copper coin loses all of its value. You don't see it as you used to see it actually a moment ago. Now you're focusing on the uh, golden coin. And that's really what happens. You know, something becomes cheap and insignificant, zahid, in comparison. So how could a person actually develop this zuhud in the dunya by comparing it with something much greater, much bigger, which of course is al-jannah. And that may be the reason that al-jannah is described in so much detail in the Quran and the hadith more so than the jahannam that the Prophet ﷺ talks about the, the blessings, the beautiful things of Al-Jannah, the Qur'an as well, you know. So as for you to make the comparison, how would that compare with this word? That's why if the person actually keeps that vivid in, in their mind, always thinking about uh, Al-Jannah, then this will help them develop this zuhd in the dunya. Because they're always actually making that, that comparison. Now of course, having zuhd in the dunya, it doesn't mean that the person should sit down idle, doing nothing or not achieving any gains in this uh, dunya. Remember I said that the zuhd is a deed of the heart, which means that the senses can still actually accumulate some parts of the dunya, so long as the dunya is looked at as a means and not as a goal, as a means to achieve certain things, even for enjoyment, there's nothing uh, wrong with that. You know, I really like this statement made by uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, when somebody asked him that, uh, could a person be rich and zahid at the same time. Could he have zuhd at the same time? And he said, yes, if money is in his, his hands as a means, again, and not in his heart. Which means, again, he has the money, but he looks at the money as a means and not as an end in itself. And I think this is really something very important to keep in mind. So again, having zuhd in the dunya will be the path for the person to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the second part of the hadith, of course, having zuhd in what people have. And this is, of course, would be the key to making people actually uh, loving you. 
that the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, wala tamuddanna aynayka ila mamatta'na bihi azwajan minhum. That do not extend your sight into that which we have blessed some people with. Which means basically having zuhud in what people have and don't always actually look into what people uh, have. And I think which brings an important aspect which is the, uh, uh, the hasad or the envy. Uh, that we uh, observe, and subhanAllah, the hasad is something natural, by the way. You know, whenever you see something nice, you always desire to have these things. But the problem is when you start desiring for that person to lose it. That's why I think the best way to deal with the, uh, with the hasad is to neutralize it with a positive feeling. You know, when you see something that you desire, whether it's a car or somebody has something nice, uh, well, I try it. Try to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for protecting that. That, ya Allah, protect that for them. You'll find that it does something strange to your heart automatically. You know, that feeling actually is dissipated. The other thing is that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with anything good, you know, make it easy on people. You know, if Allah blessed you with a uh, nice Bentley, you don't have to keep driving it to the masjid every time you come over, you know, <laughs> because people desire these things. If, if alhamdulillah, Allah blessed a sister with a nice understanding husband and she's sitting among some sisters that have marital problems, I mean, imagine if she keeps on talking how nice he is in the midst of all of these things, this will not be actually conducive to this zuhud or this feeling toward others. That's why, subhanAllah, this hadith shows us something really important, to earn the love of the people, but of course, above all of that, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if a person earns the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is it. Nothing else matters. You have the thing that matters the most, that deals with everything else, because now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. And there are some people that Allah loves, as this hadith indicate, and also other uh, verses indicate that Allah loves the tawabin, al mutatahirin, al muhsinin, you know, that these people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give their special love. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among that love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the company of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in the hereafter. Zakumullah khair, walhamdulillah rabbil alayhi.